Now, today we're going to be taking another trip down to the wonderful Northumberland Zoo. If you didn't catch the first episode, just go into our YouTube channel and search Leading Link. If you're struggling though, if you just go onto leadinglink.co.uk and find the Bright Siders, episode 1 will be on there. So, down at North Dublin Zoo, we caught up with the fantastic zookeeper Daniel, who took us to meet the marmosets. Now, if you look really closely in this video, you might see a familiar face. Oh, look at that. Tasty? <laughs> you just dropped yours. <laughs> So Daniel, what are these then? These are our common marmosets. Yeah. So they're um, they're a very very small little uh, little primate species. Very very cheeky. Probably one of the, the cheekiest and uh, naughtiest animals that we've certainly <laughs> got in here. Um, they're uh, they like to get their own way. They're yeah. Just, they're just enjoying some some worms there now. Some they're, worms. They're, yeah. They've, they've got they've got Mario worms. They really enjoy insects. So. Um, Worms, cockroaches, crickets, locusts, anything like that, they're, they're quite fond of. That's amazing. So do they eat anything else then other than worms they also, and They also get um, veg as well. We try to limit what fruit we give them. They absolutely adore fruit, but we tend to use it just if we're trying to weigh them or yeah. for health check reasons, because it's quite sugary and uh, it's not that good for them to have too much. <laughs> yeah. If you're all taken, you've got three, that's just greedy. You can tell that they are cheeky, can't you? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And then, uh, and then they also get um, gum as well. So, so in gum. the wild, what these guys will do is they'll be, they'll use their little teeth um, and they'll they'll chisel back the bark on the trees and they'll they'll extract the gum. Yeah. And um, that is naturally found on on, on in the trees. Um, so it's a really big part of their diet. So what we do is we'll mimic it. We, we get it as a dry powder. You mix it up and then we'll paint it on the branches. We'll eject it in the holes within the branches. So that they have to, to get it in as natural a way as possible. Yeah. There's one left and four mama's left. Who's going to get it? I think the one in the middle will probably snatch it. Yeah, yeah. Um, hold it. So um, where are they from then? Um, you'll find these again, South America. Um, South America. South America, really warm rainforest areas. A lot of the animals that are in this building come from those sort of rainforest areas, hence why it's, it's quite so warm in here. Um, they're just wanting more, aren't they? The greedy little ones. Yeah, do they all get along with each other in there then? They do mostly. Um, they're all brothers. They're, so they're, based, they're two sets of twins. So they're brothers from a year apart. Wow. Um, so obviously no, no babies or anything. But uh, yeah, they, they mostly get on. There is a dominant one and sometimes sometimes they will have little arguments just like any brothers and sisters and things. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's never anything too bad for the most part. They're all, they're all best mates. Yeah. You can tell that they've been keeping themselves occupied though, especially with the gum thing that you've yeah. got. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then we, we do, they have got a slice of the bath, so they've got access to an outside area yeah. um, as well. But during the summer months, they love being out there sunning themselves. Not quite so much when it's cold and miserable like it is now, but, but definitely over the summer, they do enjoy it. Oh, amazing. You're all going to let me leave, or you're just going to sit on the floor? <laughs> all demanding more, aren't they? They're all hoping that, the, that they find some more that they've dropped down there. Uh, is it because they're hungry or they're just greedy? It, they're greedy. They absolutely, usually they don't get their bugs till the afternoon. Right. So because I've given them them now in the morning, it, they're especially excited and and uh, want to make sure that they absolutely get them all. Yeah. But it won't make any difference because in the afternoon they'll still be expecting their bugs at the normal yeah. time as well. Oh, I've just seen an armadillo. So they, they share the same what is the armadillo? They do. They'll share quite similar habitats in the wild. They get on. I say they get on. They, they, for the most part, just ignore each other. Just mind their own uh, business. The armadillos sometimes get the benefit because um, the, if these guys knock food off or throw it out, he'll he'll hoover it up on the floor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the most part, <laughs> they, they get on. Oh, 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 yeah. It's kind of, yeah. I mean, something this small would certainly be a potential creator of the armadillo <laughs> if they were a lot less agile. Yeah. They can easily get out of the way. Oh, how amazing are those marmosets? To think they've all got personalities of the own, just <laughs> just how cheeky they all are and just greedy. Poor, da poor Daniel, but oh, he loves them really. <laughs> anyway, we took a trip down to where the stick insects were. Now, when I think about stick insects, I always think about how tiny the little creatures are. But when we went to see them in person, I discovered that they weren't as tiny as I expected them to be. Right, so what is this you've got in your hand? Whoa, that is huge! This is a giant prickly stick insect. So this is not Whoa. actually an adult. The adult size, I should have probably got that one. <laughs> so this is a, 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 a 
this one down here. This is a, an adult female. So that one's very Whoa. that one's very close. But this is this is these are these are females. The males look entirely different. Yeah. Females can't fly. They've only got these tiny little sort of bud wings down here that serve really no purpose. Oh, I see. Whereas the males can fly incredibly well, and. Um, so the males are very long and thin, yeah. and these this whole thing right down here, that's all wings folded in, so um, they can fly. He's not going to take off now, is he? <laughs> no, no, he's not. It's uh, it's quite cool in here, so he's, he's all right today. Oh, fab. Wow, these are amazing. So do they, um, so I'm, I'm assuming because um, of their habitats and everything, they sort of blend in with the um, with the trees they in do. the wild? They, they yeah. come from kind of Australia, New Guinea, those sorts of places, but they're in sort of quite dry, yeah. Dry brownie sort of, of trees. They also have an ability um, to, to sort of blend a little bit more with the trees that they're living in. Yeah. So if the trees that they sort of grow up on effectively, they'll take on the colour a little bit as well. Wow. Um, so work that hand. So yeah, and you can see when I move them around, that's that's when they'll curl that tail up because they're a yeah. bit uncomfortable. They're not very very pleased I've done it. So they <laughs> curl that up, and it's to make themselves look like a scorpion. Wow. So that's, um, yeah, basically, if you were a bird or or anything that wanted to come and eat one of these guys, a stick insect's not particularly threatening. Mm. But when you suddenly think actually it's a scorpion that could do me a lot of damage, yeah, you tend to leave it alone. So it's a event, absolutely nothing. There's no sting in this tail whatsoever. At this size, all that tail is full of now is eggs because when she gets to the full size, mm -hmm. they just produce produce egg after egg after egg wow so there's nothing in it at all dangerous but they can fool predators into thinking that's really clever that actually. perhaps um that perhaps yeah that they may be best not to have as a snack yeah and all of these spikes <laughs> on the legs if they really needed to they can't they can actually puncture even even human skin they're not likely to they're very very laid back but if yeah. they needed to they'll bring those two two back legs together and they'll kind of grab with them and um hmm. and yeah that'll be uh that's really so, clever. They just look like walking little. Oh. Walk it, yeah, basically walking <laughs> leaves. So that they're, they're, they're designed to look like like dried, like dried leaves. Yeah. So that obviously if they're if they're hanging in the tree, you're probably not even going to bother investigating it because <laughs> you'll be relatively confident it's a dried leaf. It's not particularly tasty. Whereas in actual fact, they're, they're quite a they're quite a meaty snack if something did get there. Yeah, they look quite quite meaty. Yeah, definitely. Should definitely not have gone with two. I think it's a really clever it's habitat. Clever. I think just not. They're not threatening, but the look here and yeah. you know the camouflage. It's it's a really, it's just really clever, I think. How they do it all. Even the way down to how they breed is also the, the, the camouflage and um, it's all, all part of that. The eggs. She might have made some of these. Eggs are these, oh. are these tiny, tiny little, wow, little balls. Come on, and they're, okay. they're coated in a special protein that attracts yeah. ants. Um, it's a, it's a food. The very outer layer is a, is a food that ants or a smell that ants are really attracted to. So what they'll do is they'll drop them down from the trees above. Yeah. Ants below will pick these up, carry them into their food chambers, where they'll be nice and safe. They're not going to get stood on. They're not going to get eaten by birds. So they, they fool the ants initially, before they're even born, they fool the ants into thinking that they're food. Wow. And then when they very, very, very first hatch, they look like the ants that have, um, <laughs> have taken them. So when they're down there and they hatch out in the nest, they can be completely um, safe in there because the ants aren't going to attack them because they think they're their own food species. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then they make their way out of the nest and slowly but surely then grow through through into these bigger, bigger sizes. That's really clever, so technically, they've kind of fooled the ants to help them in a way too. They have, yeah. The ants have no idea ever. <laughs> They're completely oblivious. They've got in, they've had the, eat the outer layer of the shell causing no problem to the, um, to the egg or the baby. So the ants oh. have had a little bit of a snack. Baby hatches, off he goes up a tree. They've never got no idea whatsoever that they've helped a complete other species to, to, to live and survive. That's so interesting. So the stick insects, they just they look like predators, but they're not to stop them from getting eaten by birds and this other creatures. This one's not, not quite a, a baby baby. Oh, but this is this so is like cute. what we class as the second the second instar. So basically this yeah. is this is molded its skin once. So so that's a, a probably about yeah. ten, 10 days old or something like that. That's the type of sticking set that I've seen like before live. Yeah. But to think that that is gonna turn into that is just is that's just ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah. It's incredible how big they've got, honestly. I must admit when I first saw you put the sticking set in your hand, I was absolutely terrified. Like, oh, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> I'm too scared. 
Um, but no, I'm, I'm absolutely really fascinated by these stick insects. Like, you know, the simple creatures, and, yeah. you know, they can just easily protect themselves. They're pretty much sorted in the wild, aren't yeah. they? And you'll see the way that they're hanging just there now. Yeah. See them slightly gently rocking? Yeah, it's just chilling, isn't it? <coughs> the reason that they're rocking like that is obviously I've just shut that door, so he felt the air brush past him. Obviously, if they're in a tree and they feel the wind pick up, yeah. they start rocking a bit quicker because every other leaf on the tree is going to yeah. be swaying in the breeze. So if, if all the leaves were swaying and they are dead still, they're going to stand out like a sore thumb. So they have to, to, to sway it with, along with the leaves effectively to, to blend in. Yeah, this so is... that, that rocking is purely because there was a slight breeze there when I closed the door. <laughs> so they've started rocking to, uh, started to match rocking. it. Yeah. That's really clever. There's another one there as well that looks really chill as well. That's the male one, isn't it? That's the male there, yeah. 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 I think we've got 20 something in that mode, but most of them are just little tiny ones like that. Little, sit, like that little baby, so they're, they're at the minute still quite well hidden. Yeah. Wow, how amazing are those stick insects! To think all they have to do to scare away predators is just to change the shape of them and not even do anything. I mean, that's just incredible of these stick insects. Now, the final part of the trip was visiting the harvest mice. Now these little animals were so tiny and so quick and rapid just all over the hut. Couldn't even keep up with them. But you're going to see how fast they are in person. Yeah, the harvest mice uh, come from? Um... And they're actually native to this country, so you will find okay. them in the wild in this country. Um, there's there's a lot of reintroduction programs because obviously they need quite a specific type of habitat um, and just with more houses being built and, yeah. and things like that obviously the habitat isn't quite as available as it once was so there's a lot of breeding projects where they're breeding them in captivity just like this to release them into the wild hopefully that's yeah. something that we're wanting to try and at least at least sort of get involved with in some way this this year yeah. so amazing though because they're running so quickly and they can climb up that ladder and yep. then across the logs just they are just they're all over the place and they use their yeah. tails um, as, as balance so kind of like okay. a like a gymnast on a trapeze kind of <laughs> thing using a the, the yeah. stick is balanced that's what they'll use their tails for so wow. so if they get to the edges of branches you'll see the tail goes really stiff and they're literally using yeah. it as, as balance let's get these harvest mice to the olympics eh? get them <laughs> definitely the yeah get them in the gymnastics definitely that's pure gold already for these for these little ones Oh. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that one's getting a little bit feisty. Yeah, you will sometimes see them chasing each other around. It tends to be if somebody's pushed their luck with mum or dad, they, they, they tell them off in no uncertain terms. Yeah. Have you ever seen them like getting in like proper scrap fights or? They're generally okay. They're generally There's, okay. Occasionally you, you might have to, to take one out if mum decides she doesn't really like them yeah. anymore. Um, but most of the time they're, uh, yeah. they're okay. I'm going to try and see if I can spot the mama one. Um, i trying to think. Uh, is it that one? Is it her right at the top? No, nope, just, just chill it. The one a little bit lower down. She's also easy to tell because she's only got about three quarters of her tail. Okay. Um, she came to us like that, so chances are when she was younger, she was either in a bit of a fight or oh. or maybe just when she was very first born, it was just a, a bit of a birth defect. We're not sure, but either way, she, she does only have about three quarters of her tail. Okay. But uh, the big the big fat tummy's a giveaway at the moment as well. Yeah. How cute were those harvest mice? I couldn't even believe there was 26 of them all in that one space. It's just absolutely incredible. I can't wait to tell Prof about all this information. In fact, I'm going to ring him now. Now remember, in the first episode, Prof set us a couple of tasks. The first one was to create a shield like an armadillo, and the second one was to draw or create a parrot. So, I wonder if he's going to have us do some challenges. Let's see. Here we go. Hiya, Pro. Oh, hello, Sonny. How are you doing? Lovely to speak to you again. Lovely what to have you speak been to you. up to? Oh, oh what I've you. been up to? I've been down Come to Northumberland Zoo again. <gasps> You're so lucky. <laughs> you are a lucky man. Oh, thank you. What have you been seeing there, then? Um, I saw some marmosettes. Mm -hmm. Do you know what a marmoset is? Kind of, but you'd be better if you told me. So the type of monkey, all the way down from South America, Ooh, they're very cheeky, mm -hmm. they're very greedy, but they're very cute. Uh, like that, yes, I think I could be friends with those. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, they ju they can jump from one tree to another very high, and they literally just search the ground for their food, and they literally just... Sometimes they bicker with each other, but they seem to get along really well with each other. Well, that's nice. I like that. I yeah. I could be friends with them. What else yeah. have we seen then? We saw some stick insects. Not the tiny ones, though, but the more bigger ones. 
Yeah, probably the size thing. of your hands, if you think. Wow. Size, yeah, they're quite big. Oh, I'm, I didn't kind of know they came in that size. I have seen little ones before. But yeah, yeah, they do start really tiny, like really, really tiny eggs. Like you probably wouldn't be able to see them because they're that small, the eggs. But wow. then they grow and they grow until eventually they grow to the size of your hand. They blend into trees to hide from predators, for example, birds. And they just, if a bird sees them, they pose to make themselves look like they're gonna get them and then oh, the birds right. fly away. But really, like the insects are non threatening at all. So, do, do they pull funny faces? <laughs> no, um, I couldn't tell by the faces, but with the claws, they pull sort of um, like a defense oh, sort of. Wow. I know. Oh, I like that. I like that. Uh, yeah. Anything else this time? Yeah, we saw some harvest mice. Mm. Very, very tiny, very, very quick little animals. They just mm -hmm. roam about um, in one small space. And it, what looked like there was about 10 of them, there's actually 26 of them. They're that small, but they're 26. all... 26? Yeah, <laughs> really <laughs> oh, oh, they were so cute, though. Like, the tails were really, really long as well. And um, they just lived in, like, lovely little den huts as well. That they oh. all Really that, sounds, that sounds like a great place to be. Yeah. So you're you're going to want some challenges, aren't you, for this week? Oh yes. Do you have anything mm, in your okay. mind? Okay. Okay. So I've been, let's have a think about that. Now th these marmosets like to jump. They do. They do. Okay. So how about a challenge where um, our young people try and jump? So from a standing start they could okay. try and jump and measure see how far they go and record it and then they could have a run up and do another jump and see if there's any difference see if they go further when they do the run up or from a standing start that would be that's quite really good cool. so do you want them to measure it in meters how far i think they jump? meters would be appropriate wouldn't it okay. yes i think so um now the, the harvest mice Yes. You said they live in a den. They do indeed. Oh, this is a huge opportunity. What about if our young people built their own little den? Sounds really good. Do what do you want them out of? Like oh, blankets, you, cushions? You could, do, you could use anything, couldn't you? You could use blankets and cushions or cardboard boxes. Or, oh, yes. Or, or anything they've got lying around the house, really. Wow. We used to use um, the the, tab the chairs around the dining table and put blankets over. That was quite good. We used to enjoy that when I was little. I would have um, never thought of that. So in the dens, can they build, put a little bed in there? Can they just use it to read a book or well, even they should, play the they Nintendo should, Switch? Oh, they, should, they should make it as comfortable as they can, shouldn't they, really? Oh, yeah, definitely. And uh, we, should, we should have a nice, comfortable photo of them as well. That would be oh, lovely. yeah, that would be lovely. They'd be giving us a wave. I like it. I mean, Hello. <laughs> um, so we've done the harvest mice and we've done the marmosets and the last one was the sick insect. Yes. Well, this is a huge opportunity, isn't it? Um, is how it? about, I think, I think so. How about if our young people made their own model stick insect? Okay, so can it be made out of like twigs and leaves? Oh, absolutely. You Even don't a need stick? Very much, <laughs> do you? Even a real stick, yes. You don't need very much. Um, so it's an insect, so it must have six legs. Wow. Um, six legs? Do they, do they have little, um, no, what are those feelery things on top of the heads? Do I they think they do, yeah. If they just go on Google or even watch back the video oh. of the stick insects, they Google. should be able to get a good glimpse of what they look like. That would be really good, wouldn't it? It really would. Well, yeah, I'd, like, I'd like to see some photos as well, of course. Definitely. I would mm. love to see them as well. Well, you've um, you've set us quite a few tasks there, Prof, so we better all get cracking with them, haven't we? Yes, please. I can't <laughs> wait to see the results. Yeah, me too. Well, it was lovely speaking to you again, Prof, and um, hopefully I can and see you again soon. soon after my next adventure. Yes, please. See you soon. See, see you soon, Sonny. Prof. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, thanks for that, Prof. It's always great to share my adventures and all the fun that I've had with my good friend Prof. So guys, don't forget to do the challenges. We've got to make stick insects out of anything you can find. Could be paper, could be sticks, leaves, 
anything. There's also one thing you could do with the stick insects. Maybe hide them in trees or something. Just see if anybody in your household can find them. Um, there's also how far you guys can jump in meters, like the Marvis X. And finally, to create the most inventive den you can. It can be used with cushions, it can be uh, made onto your table, anything. Just make it as fun and exciting as possible. And don't forget to ask an adult to email at sleevenlink.co.uk any photographs you have of these projects and challenges that you've made. So, until then boys and girls, I'll see you in the future for further challenges. We'll be going down to places such as Plessy Woods, we'll be going down to Woodhorn, and we'll even be making some pancakes, all ready for pancake day. Until then guys, I'll see you very soon. Bye!